we notice what why do we think when we look at these images we can see mercury obviously tons of craters um while venus and the earth eh, maybe maybe there's a few on venus maybe there's one i kind of picked a special picture of earth but there's not very many craters on earth and then there's a few on mars but definitely less than what was on um mercury what were you thinking um people want to throw it in the chat what might be a event that could resurface the earth or or the surface of a planet sorry <laughs> and why might venus and earth also be different Yeah, so earthquakes, earthquakes can definitely change the surface. So Earth is special in that way. Um, so earthquakes are one thing that could resurface the Earth. Uh, fires, fires, yeah. So if you have stuff that can burn, that can change the surface of the Earth. Um, flooding, absolutely, especially out here in um, Washington. If any of you have been to Palouse Falls, those were all for, uh, formed by giant floods. So that's pretty cool, the Columbia Gorge as well. Um, Erosion, so anywhere where there's wind, we can get erosion. Um, volcanoes, yep, volcanoes are a big ones, so different types of flows, so volcanoes especially. Um, great, so you guys got that pretty well. The other thing I talked to some groups about on Earth is that water not only causes floods, but um, because so much of the surface of the Earth is covered by oceans, we have fewer impact craters just because some of the impacts that happen on Earth happen in the ocean. So um, unless it's a very, very large uh, impactor, you might not actually get a crater if it lands in the ocean, which is cool. Um, you can still get very large problems. So there's a really cool book um, I recommend, sorry, quick aside, um, called Oh gosh, I think it's the Lady Astronauts of Mars is the series, but it starts with a giant crater hitting the ocean, or a giant meteor hitting the ocean off of Washington, D.C. in the 50s. And so it's like, how would the space race be different if we were also dealing with um, the effects of a giant impact? And because it happened in the ocean, there's a ton of steam that's released and that causes a lot of issues. So it's really cool. Good book. Um, the Lady Astronauts of Mars, I think, is the series. So. Um, if you are looking for something fun. Um, and what we can see here is that we can kind of use geological principles similar to what is, uh, what is used on Earth, sorry, aside, jumping back in, um, to order events that happen on the surfaces of other planets. So here we can kind of see that A seems like it must have happened before B or after B, sorry, A has to have happened after B because it is covering up part of B. So it must have happened once B was already there, so it could destroy the um, surface on B and change what Venus looked like. So we can kind of make a history here where it looks like A, B, and then C and D, it's harder to tell, but it's probably A, B, C, D, A being the most recent, D being the least recent. If I had labeled features on the moon, <laughs> um, you would have been able to kind of start to think we've got this giant impact crater here um, and then there's some smaller ones, and um, you can kind of see that this giant one must have happened first, and then some of these smaller ones happened later. Um, I forget which ones I actually had marked, but we can also see at some point there was a basalt flow, so something flowed into this giant crater, so it must have happened after the giant crater formed because it had to flow into it. But we can also see that it, um, some of the craters, like this small one here and these other small ones, seem to have happened after, where some of the others looks like they were filled by the flow. So this one looks like it was filled by the basalt flow. We can see this kind of smooth surface underneath. So this crater would have happened before the basalt flow. Um, the big one and some of this one over here um, would have happened before, whereas ones where we can kind of see they're still, they don't look like they've been filled in, must have happened after. So this is using kind of geological principles to order um, surface features on different planets. And from this, the last question I asked was how might we use this information? Um, one of the big things we can do is we can kind of come up with a history of our solar system based on how the different surfaces look. So we can look for um, 
periods where there might have been a ton of uh, impact events so and how that might affect the solar system we can get ideas of just how the uh, solar system has evolved with time by looking at these these histories of impact event events the other thing I heard um, from one of the groups is that we could also potentially use this to get an idea of what's happening underneath the surface of these planets, which is absolutely true. Looking at the kind of um, volcanism on Mercury, I know they've been able to figure out the composition of the interior layers based on how explosive these volcanoes are. So looking at the flows and how they occur over time tells us about the interior structure as well. So I think folks I talked to seem to pretty much have a handle on that. So let's cruise through some stuff about Venus and Mars. We'll see how far we get. Um, <laughs> Venus is very similar to Earth, except it is closer to the sun. Um, it's about the same size, about the same gravity, about the same mass as Earth. It's sometimes called Earth's twin, um, but it's about three quarters of the distance from the sun is Earth, so 0.72 AU. Earth is at one AU, one astronomical unit. Uh, its orbit is pretty circular, only an eccentricity of 0.01, but it has a crazy tilt, so a tilt of 177 degrees, which means it is flipped. Um, so Venus is kind of rotating the opposite direction of every other planet in our solar system. Why? Who knows? Um, potentially collisions. Um, Days on Venus are very, very long. So the rotation period on Venus is actually longer than a year. So a day is 243 day Earth days, whereas a year is only 225 Earth years. So a day on Venus is longer than a year on Venus. Um, and Venus also doesn't have any moons. So Mercury and Venus do both are moonless. Venus's surface is very, very difficult to observe because it has this really, really, really thick atmosphere. Um, so unlike Mercury and Mars, which practically have no atmosphere, um, Venus has a ton of sulfur and carbon dioxide clouds that obscure its surface from us, from us viewing it. This is another reason why um, Venus doesn't have very many impact craters. Um, they get destroyed as they pass through, they burn up as they pass through Venus's thick atmosphere. Because Venus has a really thick atmosphere, um, it experiences a pretty intense greenhouse effect. So um, the thick atmosphere causes really high pressures. Pressure on Venus is about 900 times that on Earth. So Earth is about at one atmosphere. Venus, I think, is 900, 90 or 900. Oh, shoot. It's one of those two. Uh, sorry, my numbers are lost in my brain. Um, but these really thick layers of carbon di dioxide in Venus's atmosphere keep heat in. So Venus is a, actually the hottest planet in our solar system, even though it's not the closest to the sun. So Mercury has those really crazy temperature ranges because it doesn't have an atmosphere. It can lose heat really easily. Venus has this really intense blanket essentially over it that's holding heat in and not letting sunlight escape, warming up the atmosphere through the greenhouse effect. And just to kind of, this is always, I have to show this because it's the best explanation of the greenhouse effect I have ever seen. This year, our everyday purchases created adventures right here at home, like Couch Cove. Use your American Airlines MasterCard and get miles closer to the trip you promised. And start something priceless. Global warming or none like it hot. <laughs> You're probably wondering why your ice cream went away. Well, Susie, the culprit isn't foreigners, it's global warming. Global warming? Yeah. Meet Mr. Sunbeam. He comes all the way from the sun to visit Earth. Hello, Earth. Just popping in to brighten your day. La, 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 la. And now, I'll be on my way. Not so fast, Sunbeam. We're greenhouse gases. You ain't going nowhere. Pretty soon, Earth is chock full of sunbeams. They're rotting corpses heating our atmosphere. <laughs> How do we 
we get rid of the greenhouse grasses? Fortunately, our handsomest politicians came up with a cheap, last-minute way to combat global warming. Ever since 2063, we simply drop a giant ice cube into the ocean every now and then. So, besides the solution, that's a pretty good explanation from Futurama of what global warming is. Sunlight can pass through greenhouse gases because it's a shorter wavelength. Sorry, I had to get that right. Um, so sunlight is optical wavelengths for the most part. We'll talk about light in a couple weeks, so we'll get into this. Um, but it's a short wavelength, can pass through. It heats up the Earth, and as it heats up the Earth, the Earth re-emits, or Venus in this case, sorry. Um, Venus will re-emit infrared light instead of optical light. And the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases will absorb that infrared light and will not let it get back out into space. So optical light from the sun can pass through greenhouse gases, but infrared light re-emitted out will get blocked and absorbed and will stay inside of the atmosphere of a planet experiencing the greenhouse effect and heat it up. The warmer you get, often the more greenhouse gases you get, which causes kind of cyclical issues where we're getting more and more greenhouse gases as we heat up, and that can cause problems. So this uh, greenhouse gases are just, but yeah, I think remembering that Futurama clip is often the best way to remember what's happening with greenhouse effect. Sorry. So uh, greenhouse gases are any gas that has a dipole moment so it can wiggle. It can wiggle and it can absorb light. So we can see all of these, the non-greenhouse gases are those symmetric ones. They don't have a dipole moment. They're, they can't um, absorb light through wiggling, whereas the greenhouse gases have some sort of kind of structure that looks something like this, and they can wiggle really well. So um, I know water, so we're gonna pretend that I am a water molecule. My head is gonna be our oxygen and my arms are going to be hydrogens. My head is very slightly negatively charged. My arm, my hands are going to be slightly positively charged. If an infrared light beam comes by me, I'm going to start wiggling like this. So I have a dipole moment and I can wiggle with the um, light and that absorbs the light and stores the heat inside of our atmosphere. So if we can, gases that can do these kind of wiggling motions will be greenhouse gases that can block the sunlight that is absorbed by Earth from re-escaping into space and cooling things down. So Venus has a ton of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere, and we can see carbon dioxide is one of those greenhouse gases. It's really good at wiggling when um, infrared light tries to pass through it, so that infrared light is stopped and it gets, stays within Venus's atmosphere and heats up Venus making things just really hot and inhospitable on Venus. So, pause there. Does have, anyone have questions about greenhouse effect? And with that also, <laughs> sorry, forgot I threw this in here. Um, but now that we've learned a little bit about what the greenhouse effect is and a little bit about the atmosphere on Venus, I want you guys to see if you can answer this question. So you can either respond um, through Poll Everywhere, the website, or you can text this code to this number and it'll let you join in. And as people answer, I will see, um, we'll get answers. I should stop. You guys can't see. Oh, but I can't. Uh, sorry. Just trying to find a way. I need to hide things. <laughs> So it seems like most people are getting 
getting the right answer. Um, it's the carbon dioxide clouds. Venus does have a really high pressure, um, but that's not the cause of the greenhouse effect. Um, it's those clouds. No one thinks it's alien cows, which is correct, uh, alien cows. Um, the reason why Venus has this tons of carbon dioxide where um, Earth doesn't is because Earth has something called the carbon cycle. Um, so there is carbon in our atmosphere, there is carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. There is a lot of carbon on Earth. We are a lot of carbon. Um, so there are certain, but just like the water cycle, there's something called the carbon cycle where carbon gets um, put into the atmosphere and then reabsorbed into oceans um, through photosynthesis, both by plankton and um, mostly plankton and then other vegetation. Uh, that stuff can, as it dies and gets into the ocean, it can turn into um, sediment and get stored in rocks and limestone and fossils. So, um, but processes like burning fossil fuels and life breathing release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So there are certain, just like the water cycle, um, water evaporates, is stored in cloud, rains, and falls down to the ocean. Where it evaporates, is stored in cloud, rains, falls down to the ocean. There's a similar cycle with carbon, where we breathe out carbon, it goes into the atmosphere, plants um, photosynthesize and turn it into food and oxygen. So, and then as those plants die, it gets stored in limestone and other sediments that we can then burn or eat, um, depending on how things go. So because Venus doesn't have oceans, Venus doesn't have life, there's nothing to cause this carbon cycle. So carbon dioxide just gets stored in the atmosphere and we get the crazy greenhouse effect that Venus has. So there aren't alien cows on Venus, but there might be life on Venus. Um, so this was something that came out yesterday. A few of you did notice this. I think some of you were writing article reports on different versions of this article. Um, but some scientists took looking at Venus, noticed that there was a molecule in Venus's atmosphere called phosphine, I think, um, that the only way that you can produce phosphine on Earth is by bacteria um respirating so bacteria breathing so we don't know where phosphine comes from except from life um, and there is phosphine in clouds on venus this does not necessarily mean there is life on venus um, it just means there is something happening on venus that is producing phosphine and as far as we know the only thing that produces phosphine is bacteria now the problem is on earth those bacteria can live in water droplets on Venus, they can't because there's not a lot of water in Venus's atmosphere. So they would have to somehow be living in sulfur dioxide droplets inside of the clouds in Venus, which is not um, super easy to do. They would also have to somehow reproduce and eat within that sulfur dioxide droplets, which is another thing that is difficult to do. So we are not sure what's happening here, um, but it's an exciting result and it's a reason to, uh, the people who study Venus are pretty excited about this and saying that we should stop sending things to Mars and instead focus on Venus. Um, but you can decide whether or not, Mars is also cool. This is very new, came out yesterday. I grabbed it yesterday. You can see it's three hours. Okay. So that's the, the atmosphere on Venus. Now we can talk a little bit about the surface. It's a little, like I said, it's hard to see what's happening on Venus's surface because of that really thick atmosphere. So we can see what's happening in the atmosphere, but it's hard to get an idea of what's happening on the ground. Um, pretty much there's only any probe we have sent through Venus atm Venus's atmosphere has melted. So um, there aren't very many images of the surface of Venus. This image was created using radar, so um, longer wavelengths of light that can actually get through those cloud layers. Um, but this is not a real color image of Venus's surface. This is fake based on those radar images. And that's most of what I'm gonna show you is either a model based on radar or um, there's a few actual images of Venus's surface we have, but not many. 
So this is the one image of Venus's surface, sorry. <laughs> uh, I got a little ahead of myself, um, from a Russian mission that did actually make it down to the surface. It did not last long once it was there. Um, but what we can see is that the surface of Venus is actually pretty gray. So this is actually a kind of real color. There's not, Venus is not yellow, it's pretty gray um, underneath all those clouds. Um, but this is one of the few actual images of Venus's surface that we have. Venus does have some impact craters, so big enough um, impactors will make it through the atmosphere and cause impact events. They're a lot flatter, and that's partially because um, the pressure on Venus is so great, it's hard to push things up into the atmosphere. So you don't get those nice ridges like you do on Mercury and the Moon, we get kind of flatter um, cratering events. Venus also has some volcanoes. It doesn't have plate tectonics, but it does have a liquid um, uh, layer underneath its surface, and that can bulge up in places as convection happens underneath. So like bubbling water or bo boiling water, um, the layer underneath Venus's surface will kind of bubble and um, occasionally push up through the surface um, and create vo volcanoes. So there are volcanoes on Venus's surface. Um, they tend to be very, very wide and not very, very long. Um, I'm going to kind of give away the answer and we're not going to make this um, a quiz, I think. But uh, the idea is uh, volcanoes on Venus are really, really flat and wide. And there's kind of two main reasons for this. The first one is that the pressure on Venus's surface is so, so much um, greater than that on Earth, that it's hard to blast things up. So you get really, really wide uh, volcanoes, but not very, very tall ones, because you're blasting up just a little bit, and then they roll out to the side. So you're getting these really, really wide um, volcanoes that aren't very tall. The other thing that's really important is that Venus doesn't have plate tectonics. So hot spots on Earth move with the plates. So the, like if we think about the Hawaiian islands, there'll be a chain of islands. It's not just one. Um, as the plates move, the hot spot will shift underneath the plate and we'll get a chain of volcanoes. On Venus, there are no plate tectonics. So you have one hot spot underneath one location, just spewing lava, spewing lava, spewing lava. And that forms a really, really big volcano over time. So there's a lot more lava coming out. We're not shifting with time. We just have the one spewing for a very long time, which makes very large volcanoes, just not very tall volcanoes. Um, there's a few different kinds of volcanoes on Venus. Um, these are mainly just based on what they look like. Um, the first one is pancake domes. So these are kind of fun. They look kind of like pancakes. They're pretty circular. As um, magma pushes up on the surface, you can get these kind of um, really nice circular pancake domes on the surface of Venus. So uh, one thing that we see, um, the heavy atmosphere again keeps them pretty flat. Um, and you can kind of see in the center, there's like sometimes a little vent where the lava is coming out. So we can see kind of where we're pushing out, we're getting lava coming out, flowing out and forming these large, flat, circular volcanoes that we call pancake domes. There are some that look semi-like spiders that are called arachnoids. So sometimes people think they look like spiders or ticks as well. Um, so there's kind of like a big tick bottom here and then a little tick head there um, where um, sorry, uh, there we can see ridges that outline avalanche scars, and these are probably happening, forming in similar ways to pancake domes, but just differences along the surface cause avalanches or um, different cracks as they form. So similar, but you get these weird funky tick or spider-like structures on the surface of Venus. The other thing I mentioned this Venus has the really weird flipped rotation. So it has an axial tilt of 177 degrees, which means 180 degrees would be totally on its head, but it's swimming backwards from all the rest of the planets. Um, we think potentially um, there was a collision that might have flipped Venus after it formed, but we don't really know why this is happening. Um, 
This could also explain why days are so long on Venus. So a collision might have also slowed it down its rotational period. So it could be why days are so long, but again, we don't really have a way of looking backwards in the history of uh, Venus to figure out what happened, except for doing our best to see what the surface looks like. So we have about eight minutes left, so I'm going to start <laughs> Mars, but we might not get all the way through it. Um, Mars is pretty small compared to Earth, so it's about half the radius of Earth. As because of that, gravity is lower. Um, it also has less mass. Um, it's one thing that we can see color sort of in the sky. So Mars has been pretty close to us recently. Um, it's been hanging out around the moon. So once the smoke goes away, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully soon, um, if you look up at night and you look near the moon, you might be able to see a red point, which is going to be Mars. Um, Mars is pretty bright and it does, um, so it is something that we can see well pretty often. Uh, it's a little further from the sun than Earth, so it has slightly long, longer years. So 687 Earth days is one Mars year. Um, but it has a pretty similar uh, day period to Earth. Mars also has impact craters, just like the other terrestrial planets. Um, these are just a couple images that the rovers took. The nice thing about Mars, Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere, so we do have a lot of great images of Mars surface, both from um, satellites, uh, telescopes, and from the rovers on Mars's surface. So Mars does have impact craters, slightly fewer than Mercury, because there are some resurfacing events through winds and erosion potentially from the presence of water in the past. Nice, I have a name. This is the Victoria Crater, if you want a name for it. <laughs> Mars also has volcanoes. This is Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano in our solar system. Um, just as a way of kind of getting a size of this, uh, Olympus Mons, the entire volcano is about the same size as the state of Arizona. So um, despite Mars being smaller than the Earth, its volcanoes are truly enormous. Um, again, we can kind of think about why volcanoes um, might get so big on Mars the same way we did on Venus. Um, Mars, again, doesn't have plate tectonics. So once you get a hotspot in one location, that hotspot does not move at all. So you just build up one volcano over time instead of building up a chain of volcanoes. And then unlike Venus, Mars doesn't really have much of an atmosphere, so it's able to shoot things up. Um, so we get really, really tall volcanoes as, rel as well as really, really long ones. So this image here is just kind of comparing Mount Everest and Mauna Kea, two of the biggest um, mountains on Earth, to Olympus Mons, which is much, much, much larger. So um, the mountains, the volcanoes on Mars are very, very big, especially compared to what we have on Earth. Um, Mars also has the deepest canyon in the solar system with Valle Marineris. Um, and it's, it seems to be a crack on the surface that might be caused by the fact that the northern hemisphere of Mars and the southern hemisphere of Mars have different thicknesses. So um, potentially uh, something about the formation of that thicker surface on the one side um, and the Tharsis bulge, which we'll see in the next slide, um, could have caused the surface to crack. Um, but again, we're not really 100% sure why this huge uh, crack is on the surface of Mars. So we think it has something to do with the differences in thicknesses. So this we can kind of see where Olympus Mons is and where our, um, the valley is by looking at the altitude of the um, surface of Mars in different locations. So the nother, northern and southern hemisphere are very, very different. We can see one is a lot lower and one has a lot more of these higher elevation areas. So potentially something in whatever caused this thickening on, I believe it's the southern hemisphere, I'm sorry, I should have labeled these and I didn't, um, might have caused that crack, but we don't really know. And we don't really know why one of the sides is thicker than the other, it just is. There's also a lot of evidence for water on Mars. So we can see um, things that look like gullies and channels on Earth. 
that seem to be like stuff flowing. It definitely looks like flowing, which indicates the presence of water. Um, there's a lot of these, uh, <laughs> and it's pretty crazy that there is potentially somewhere else in the sol solar system that at one point had water. It no longer does, um, but at one point there seemed to be liquid water on Mars. Oops. Uh, another example of a possible indicator of water is this chaos terrain, which might have formed when water froze and then cracked. So this is something that happens on Earth as well. Um, as water, water's ice is, um, as water freezes, it expands, sorry. Um, so if there was water inside the surface of, the, of Mars, as it freezes, it would cause chaos terrain like this, this cracked terrain, which could um, indicate that there was at one point water that melted and was in a liquid phase, not just in a solid phase. There's also some rocks on Mars, some minerals that you can only um, form in aqueous environments on Earth. So hematite is one of these rock mineral minerals that was discovered by um, the Spirit rover. Um, so we can only get hematite if there is water on Mars. So um, another uh, suggestion that there must have at some point of time been liquid water on Mars. there still does seem to be some water ice on Mars. So there's no liquid water at this point that we can find, but there does seem to be some frozen water in forms of ice. So in this image, this GIF over here that's kind of changing, you can see this white stuff is ice and we can see that it's sublimating. So instead of melting, it's turning directly into a gas. Um, and as it does that, the amount of it changes as it moves into the sunlight or out into the shadow. So um, there is, ice on Mars and there is gaseous water, there is steam on Mars, but there is no liquid water. And we know that is true because the pressure and temperature conditions on Mars do not allow for liquid water. So this is a um, semi-complicated graph showing the different phases of water um, depending on the temperature and pressure for wherever you are. So um, if you've read Cat's Cradle, they talk about Ice Nine. Ice Nine is a real thing. There are different phases of um, solid water. Um, but what we can do is we can see there are certain places, so especially these pressures and temperatures down here, where there is no potential for liquid water. And Mars is gonna be um, in these cooler temperatures, lower pressures. So there's no way to get um, liquid water as it moves um, throughout its seasons. Uh, I'm going to stop there because we are out of time. Um, there are some questions in your assignment based on um, a cratering. Um, uh, so there's this fun thing. If you have time, I encourage you to check this out, but I won't uh, require it. So you can, if you want to see how different impacts on Earth might affect things. You can do uh, that back whale into the Earth's surface um, and see what happens. So I won't require that. If you did your surfaces activity, you got your um, points, but this is a fun thing to play around with if you have some time. about what happened. Um, so I'll take that off. I'll get this video posted um, and we will finish up